Welcome to Decode with Nitin, the podcast where we break down the world of data, AI, and tech into human, relatable stories. Whether you're a curious learner or an industry pro, there's something here for you. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated with every new episode. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. This is your shortcut to getting really informed, uh, packed with insights, maybe a little bit humor too. I'm Nitin Goswami. And today, wow, we're diving into something that's, well, it's everywhere. Machine learning, what is it? Why is everyone talking about it? That's our mission today, Decode ML. No jargon, just clarity based on, you know, the solid sources we've lined up. Before we jump in, quick favor, hit that like button if you think this stuff is valuable. And if you're on YouTube, maybe drop a comment. Beginner, intermediate, expert in ML. Let us know where you're at. And yeah, subscribe. More deep dives coming your way. Okay, let's get into it. So let's cut right to the chase. Machine learning, what is it fundamentally? Okay, so at its core, ML is a branch, a specific part of artificial intelligence. And it gives computers this, like this amazing ability to learn from data. But here's the kicker. Without being explicitly programmed, that last part, without being explicitly programmed, that sounds really important. What's the big deal there? Well, it's truly profound because it's a complete shift from how we traditionally think about computers. I mean, instead of a programmer sitting down and writing code for every single possible situation, every if this, then that. Right. Which could be millions of lines of code. Exactly. Instead, the machine itself builds its own logic. It finds these intricate patterns hidden within the data we give it. It's just much more flexible, much more powerful, especially for problems that are super complex or always changing. Okay, that makes sense. So like the spam email example. Perfect example. Traditionally, you'd write rules, right? Like if the subject has free money. <laughs> and the sender isn't in your context, market spam. Yeah, endless rules. But with ML, you just show it emails. You show it hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of emails. Yeah. And importantly, they're labeled spam, not spam. And the algorithm looks at all that, figures out the subtle clues, words, senders, maybe even weird formatting that tend to mean spam. So it learns the rules itself yeah. implicitly. Wow. Okay. This leads perfectly into the difference between ML and uh, traditional programming. It's a nice visual way to think about this. Traditional programming. Yeah. You have data. You add your rules, that's the code, the logic, and you get answers. Straightforward. Input, process, output. Very deterministic. Right. But machine learning flicks it. You give it data, and you give it the answer, the labeled examples we talked about. And from that, the machine learns the rules. Mm -hmm. It derives the underlying patterns or logic. And then it can give you new predictions for stuff it hasn't seen before. So old way, here's how it works, new way. Here's some data, you figure it out. What does it mean for solving problems? Oh, the implications are huge. With traditional code, if something new pops up, a new situation, you need a programmer to go back, write more code. It can be really rigid, slow, expensive. ML systems, though, they can often adapt. You feed them new data. They can potentially update their understanding. They learn. This makes them incredibly good for problems where the rules are just too complex to write down or they change all the time. Think about understanding human language or recognizing faces. Yeah, impossible to hard code all the variation. <laughs> and, you know, if you're listening and thinking this is all sci-fi stuff, it's really not. ML is already baked into your daily life, like constantly, yeah. often without you even noticing. Absolutely. It's surprisingly pervasive. Think about your email filter catching that scam attempt. That's ML or uh, Netflix. When it suggests that perfect show you end up watching all weekend. Based on what you watched before. Yeah. That's huh. ML understanding your taste. Or Amazon suggesting products. Or those customer service chatbots you sometimes talk to. Mm-hmm. Even things like Instagram filters that find your face or Google Maps predicting your arrival time and rerouting you around traffic jams. It's all ML. It's not just convenience. It's these systems learning about you, about the world, and adapting in real time. Exactly. And the goal is usually to improve your experience, make things more efficient, or personalize services. ML lets these companies offer that kind of tailored intelligence to millions, even billions of people at once. That's something traditional programming just couldn't handle at that scale. It's about democratizing intelligence in a way. Okay, hopefully this is starting to click for you. If this deep dive is clearing things up, I'm Nitin Goswami. And hey, now's a great time to hit that like button. Seriously, it helps other people discover this. And subscribe if you haven't already. Join us for more deep dives. Also, drop us a comment. Got questions, ideas for future topics we should decode. We genuinely read them and it helps us plan. All right, let's keep going. Now, ML isn't just one thing. There are different approaches. Different flavors, you could say. Generally, we talk about three main types. Each one is good for different kinds of problems. 
Right. It depends on the data you have and what you're trying to achieve. Okay. First one, supervised learning. This is maybe the most common. Here, you need labeled data. It's like teaching a kid with flashcards. This is a cat. This is a dog. You're providing the right answers during training. You supervise the learning. Exactly. So the, the algorithm learns to map inputs to outputs based on those examples. And common uses are things like uh, fraud detection transactions labeled fraud or not fraud. Email classification spam or not spam. Sentiment analysis positive, negative. If you have historical data with known outcomes, supervised learning is often the way to go. Got it. Okay, type two, unsupervised learning. This time you give the system data, but it's unlabeled. No right answers provided. Right. The goal isn't to predict a specific outcome, but to find structure within the data, find hidden patterns or groups. So it's like giving someone a huge box of mixed Lego bricks and asking them to sort them into logical piles without telling them how to sort. That's a pretty good analogy, yeah. It figures out the groupings itself. Okay, and what's this used for? Things like customer segmentation, finding groups of customers with similar buying habits without knowing the groups beforehand, or topic modeling, discovering the main themes in a large collection of text documents, or finding clusters of related products for recommendation systems. Interesting, finding patterns we didn't even know were there. Okay, third type, reinforcement learning. This one sounds different. It is quite different. It's about learning through trial and error. You have an agent, the system interacting with an environment. The agent takes actions. Like moving a piece in a game. Exactly. Or steering a car or moving a robot arm. And for each action, it gets feedback. Either a reward, if it did something good towards its goal, or a penalty, if it did something bad. Ah, okay. Like training a pet with treats. Sort of, yeah. yeah. Over many, many trials, it learns a strategy, a sequence of actions that maximizes its total reward over time. And this is used for gaming bots, I guess. Gaming bots that learn to play Superhuman Go or chess, yes. Yeah. Also, self-driving car navigation, robotics, teaching robots complex tasks like grasping objects, and even things like optimizing bids for online advertising. Wow. Okay, so supervised needs labels, unsupervised finds structure, reinforcement learns by doing. That's a great summary. And you choose based on your problem, right? Got labeled historical data, probably supervised, want to explore unknown patterns, unsupervised, need a system to learn optimal actions in a dynamic world. Reinforcement. Makes sense. Now, you mentioned algorithms earlier, the sort of math behind the magic. Well, less magic, more math. But yeah, algorithms are the specific engines that do the learning. Right. And you said we don't need to memorize them now, but maybe just hearing the names helps. Definitely. You'll hear these terms thrown around. For instance, linear regression. Okay, what's that generally for? Predicting continuous numbers. Think predicting house prices based on features like square footage, number of bedrooms or predicting temperature. Got it. Numbers, what about categories? For that, you might use logistic regression. Despite the name regression, it's usually for classification. Spam versus not spam, click versus no click, yes versus no. Okay, then you hear about decision trees. Yeah, decision trees are intuitive. They basically create a flowchart of questions to classify data. Is feature X greater than value Y? If yes, go left. If no, go right. And random forests. That's essentially building lots and lots of different decision trees on different parts of the data, and then averaging their predictions or taking a vote. Usually much more accurate and robust than a single tree. Okay, what about that unsupervised stuff? Clustering. A very common one there is k-means clustering. Its job is to find a specified number k of natural groups or clusters in unlabeled data, like finding those customer segments we talked about. And the big one everyone talks about, neural networks. Ah, yes, neural networks inspired loosely by the structure of the human brain. These are the algorithms powering much of deep learning. They're particularly good at complex pattern recognition tasks, like computer vision, understanding images, or natural language processing. They can learn incredibly intricate patterns if you have enough data. So lots of tools in the toolbox, mm. but fundamentally it's math doing the work. Precisely. It's applied statistics and calculus really operating at a massive scale thanks to modern computing power. It's not some mystical black box, even if the details get complex. Understanding the core mathematical ideas makes it much less intimidating. Okay, so let's say someone wants to do an ML project. What does that actually involve? It's not just picking an algorithm, right? Oh, definitely not. That's maybe one step in a much longer, messier process. It's a whole workflow, and it's usually iterative. Okay, walk us through it. Step one. Step one, and maybe the most important, collect data. 
You need relevant data for the problem you're trying to solve. And quality matters hugely here. Quantity too, often. The old garbage in, garbage out principle. Exactly that. If your data is bad, your model will be bad no matter how fancy the algorithm. Okay, data collected. What's next? Is it ready to use? Almost never. Step two is clean data. Real-world data is messy. It has missing values, errors, inconsistencies, weird formats. You spend a lot of time cleaning and preparing it. That sounds less glamorous. It's often where 80% of the work is, honestly. Did but I... it's crucial. After cleaning, you usually split data. Split it. Into what? Typically into a training set and a testing set. Maybe a validation set, too. You use the training set to teach the model. The testing set is kept aside totally unseen by the model during training. You use it at the end to get an unbiased evaluation of how well the model actually performs on new data. Okay, that makes sense. Don't test it on the stuff it already studied. So after splitting. Then you train model. This is where you feed the training data to your chosen algorithm and let it learn those patterns. This can take seconds, minutes, hours, or even days, depending on the data and complexity. And once it's trained. You test and evaluate. Use that held back testing data to see how good it is. Measure its accuracy, precision, recall, whatever metrics make sense for your problem. See if it meets your goals. And if it does. If you're happy with it, you deploy model. Put it into production. Integrate it into your application, your website, your system, so it can start making predictions on real, live data. Phew. Not quite. The world changes. Data patterns shift. So the final ongoing step is monitor. You need to keep track of how your deployed model is performing over time. Its accuracy might degrade, that's called model drift. So you often need to retrain it periodically with fresh data to keep it relevant. Wow. So it's a whole cycle. Collect, clean, split, train, test, deploy, monitor, and repeat. Exactly. It's iterative, requires constant attention, not a one and done thing at all. This continuous loop is key to keeping ML systems effective in the real world. Okay, that workflow perspective is really helpful. Now, given all the hype, let's quickly bust some common myths about ML. What is it not? A good idea. There's a lot of confusion out there. First off, ML is not magic. It seems like it sometimes. But it's grounded in math and data. No actual sorcery involved. Right. It doesn't know things intuitively. It finds statistical correlations. Second, ML isn't the same as AI. People use the terms interchangeably. But ML is a subset of AI, right? Correct. AI is the broader goal of creating intelligent machines. ML is one set of techniques, currently the most successful set for achieving aspects of AI, specifically learning from data. Okay. Myth three, ML always needs big data. Is that true? Not necessarily. While more data is often better, especially for complex models like deep neural networks, many useful ML models can be built with smaller, high-quality data sets. Sometimes domain expertise and clever feature engineering are more important than sheer volume. Good to know. And maybe the biggest one, ML doesn't think like humans do. Absolutely crucial distinction. Can you elaborate on that difference between pattern matching and real understanding? Yeah, it's fundamental. An ML model, say one that identifies cats in photos, gets incredibly good at recognizing the patterns of pixels that humans have labeled as cat. But it doesn't understand what a cat is, the concept of a furry animal, its behavior, its place in the world, the emotions it evokes. It's just matching complex statistical patterns. So it's making super sophisticated guesses based on data, not demonstrating consciousness or true comprehension. Precisely. It optimizes for a specific task based on the patterns it learned. It provides smart guesses, but its capabilities are defined and limited by its training data and the problem it was set up to solve. Understanding this helps manage expectations and use AI responsibly. Okay, this is fascinating. If you're listening and thinking, wow, I actually want to try this, where should someone start? What are the first steps? Great question. It's more accessible than ever to get started. Tool-wise, what's essential? Python is pretty much the standard language for ML. It has an amazing ecosystem of libraries. Like which ones? For general ML, scikit-learn is fantastic. It's user-friendly, has tons of algorithms implemented, and great documentation. It's the place most people start. For handling data loading it, cleaning it, manipulating it, Pandas is essential. You'll use it constantly. And for actually writing and running the code. Jupyter Notebooks are incredibly popular. They let you mix code, text, and visualizations in one document, which is great for experimentation and learning. And if setting up Python sounds daunting. Then Google Colab is your friend. It gives you a free Jupyter Notebook environment in the cloud with GPUs available, already set up with the main libraries. You just need a Google account. Awesome. What about learning resources, courses? 
The classic starting point is Andrew Nang's machine learning course on Coursera. It gives a solid theoretical foundation. Google also has its own free ML crash course, which is more hands-on. And if you're interested specifically in deep learning, fast.ai offers brilliant courses that are very practical and code first. My advice, pick a small real world problem you care about. Maybe predict your electricity bill based on past bills or your commute time. Yes, that practical application is key. Don't just read, do. Build something simple, try loading data, cleaning it a bit, training a basic model with scikit-learn. You'll learn so much more by doing. Don't be afraid to experiment and break things. That's how you learn. Which brings us perfectly to our final segment, your Decode This Challenge. As Nitin Goswami, I want you to take what you've learned today and start thinking like a machine learner, even in a small way. So the challenge is this. Pick something in your life you'd find interesting to predict. Could be anything. Your YouTube views, maybe? Your weekly grocery spending? How long your next run will take? Be creative. Then just ask yourself a few questions. What data do I already have or could I easily collect that relates to this? Could I maybe frame this as a supervised learning problem? Do I have past inputs and known outcomes? And what tool could I even try to use? Maybe just starting with a spreadsheet in Excel? Or if you're feeling bold, firing up Python or Google Colab? Seriously, even just sketching out the idea or doing a tiny experiment will build confidence. It shifts your mindset towards seeing the world in terms of data and prediction. Give it a shot. And that brings us to the end of this deep dive. Thank you so much for joining us as we unpack the world of machine learning. I'm Yetin Goswami, and I really hope this gave you some clarity and maybe sparked some curiosity. If it did, please do like this deep dive. It really helps. And comment below what are you going to try and predict. Let us know. And of course, subscribe to the deep dive for more explorations of complex topics broken down just like this. Until next time, stay curious, stay data-driven, and keep decoding. Thanks for tuning in to Decode with Nitin. If you found value in this episode, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one. Like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated with every new episode.